In today's show, we're looking ahead to Thursday. There are four games on, so who can we stream in and what are we watching for, Michael Bolton? Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. We are available on all platforms. We're here to look ahead to Thursday. There's four games on. So I'm going to highlight what I'm watching for in those four games, as well as some streaming targets that we could be paying attention to on a really, really useful streaming day with uh, just the low volume. So, morning. Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) (laughs) Mavs Nets. This is a back-to-back for Brooklyn. So I don't know if there's going to be anything weird happening. I do not believe that Kyrie will rest, that KD will rest. I don't even think Ben Simmons will rest. But I do think Joe Harris will. So that is something we need to watch. I don't know whether he will, but I think he will. The Nets are two and a half point favorites. The total is 228. I want to see Christian Wood because the crucifix has been awesome to start this season. 20 points in every game. But it's coming on a lot of stuff that feels not real. He was leading the league, I believe, in free throw attempts per per possession or yeah, free throw attempt rate or whatever it was. Um, and then that came down. And then in that game where that came down, he hit 80% of his shots. So I want to see what happens when he shoots at a normal percentage with a normal free throw rate. Because he's not going to be at like, whatever it was, 80% free throw rate, shooting 80% from the field. Like that is not going to happen. He's still going to be valuable, but I want to see what a, a regular performance looks like gives us more of an idea of how to value him as we move forward because what we're getting now is just not realistic we know the Mavs are in the midst of their this is their second quality game for the week they've got four of them but in game one Reggie Bullock and Dorian Finney-Smith shit the bed they didn't do anything now Bullock is going to continue to start he's going to play 30-31 minutes I'd like him to do something now he started out last season really cold as well hasn't quite been as bad this year but last game was pretty poor I just want to see something that gives me the hope to say, yeah, I made the right call in saying that he's a stream option for these four games. Can some of the shots go in? Or is it just going to be Luca touching the ball every time or Spencer Dinwiddie screwing something up, which is what's happened a lot. I'd like to see Bullock and Finney Smith do something positive, which they haven't done so far. Speaking of something positive, Ben Simmons. Now I'm recording this before Wednesday's game, so maybe Simmons turns the corner. But I want to see more than that. I want to see him start to yeah, have a usage of above 10%. I want to see him not foul out. I want to see him get back and get 12, 8, and 8 with two steals and a block. That's perfect. That's what you want from him. What, what you don't want is what you've gotten so far. It's been really disappointing. No, I am not dropping Ben Simmons. Absolutely not. Um, but I'm obviously worried about the production and where it is. And then I said, I want to watch Joe Harris. Mainly because I want to see, does he play in the back-to-back? If he does, and Seth Curry returns, which is possible, we know that TJ Warren's out, Batans and Nilakina are out, not that they're big parts here, but Seth Curry could return here. And how does Curry and O'Neal and Mills and Harris all fit in? The other one to watch is Timmy Hardaway on the Mavericks, who is questionable. He could have had a pretty decent role last game, but obviously didn't. But he could become a stream option if he is available to play. We just don't know whether he's going to be available to play. The next game, the Clippers and the Thunder. Well, we assume the Clippers get this one back. There's no odds or totals or spreads or anything available for this game yet. We know that the fun guy, Kawhi Leonard, is out. I'm a fun guy. (laughs) It's frustrating. I detailed my frustrations with that yesterday. It's not to put blame on anyone or call anyone soft or anything. It's just confusing and it's worrisome. Um... Paul George is likely to return after missing last game for illness. Marcus Morris is out. Josh Giddy is out. And the Bronco, Jalen Williams, is also out. Broncos country, let's ride. So there are still a lot of opportunities. I want to focus in on John Wall, who 
you know, there's been nothing but praise for John Wall, but he's not producing for fantasy. So is he actually worth holding? I'm not certain that he is, and I'm not certain there is huge minutes upside here or huge production upside. But if he's ever going to show some flashes or some more flashes, it's got to be in a game without Kawhi. So let's see what he can do. And then also Bob Covington. No Leonard, no Morris. So Covington should be able to get 20 plus and bring some of those defensive stats. But realistically, we want to see what Terrence Mann does and Amir Coffey, who was really good last game, and Nicola Batum, and even bloody Storm and Norman Powell, who's been useless so far. Does he get, well, he'll start, but can the shots go in? I think they might. And then for the Thunder, Trey Mann was great last game. Now, Shea has been awesome. He's a top three fantasy player this season. But Trey Mann producing that sort of a game with Shea there was a little bit surprising. In fact, Sheev. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. Let's see how he goes. I really think that he's at least worth rolling the dice on. And I want to watch the Moose, Mike Muscala. Now, it's him, there's Kenrich, there's Jeremiah Robinson Earl, there's Aaron Wiggins, there's Baisley, there's Poku. There's a million blokes they rotate through there. And Muscala's not going to crack 20 minutes, but he's producing good numbers. And if you're looking for a streamer, I'd almost feel better streaming in Muscala than Robinson Earl. Almost. I feel like he's a, I feel like he's a much better player, but I feel like there's a little bit more even upside there. Hopefully, Paul George is able to have a big game as well as he returns from his illness. That is, uh, that's what we hope. That's what we expect. Fingers crossed, that's what we get. What we get with Price Picks, though, is daily fantasy, and it's made easy. You don't have to go through there and create a lineup, fit it into a salary cap, and then go up against people whose entire life work is creating DFS lineups and then get smashed and lose your money. This is simple. Price Picks puts projections out for numerous different stats, and you just look at them and go, okay. I'll take over or under. That is it. You get two to five of those and put them in. Christian Wood over under 20 and a half points. I'm making that number up. But you just, hey, is Wood going to go up or is he going to go down today? I don't know. Luka Doncic over and under seven and a half rebounds. Pick the over under, whatever side you want, put it in. You do up to five of those, put them into a lineup. You can win up to 10 times your entry fee. This is available in over 30 US states and in Canada, but it's so easy. Like under 60 seconds, you can have a lineup done. And payouts are safe and fast as well. But it's not just basketball. It can be NHL. It could be NFL. It could be baseball. It could be NASCAR. It could be soccer. It could be cricket. It can be college sports, football, men's basketball, women's basketball, golf, disc golf. Yes. The Pro Disc Golf League apparently has price picks over-unders. No idea how that game scored, but hey, you can do it on price picks. So download the price picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant, instant deposit match up to $100 dues with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, price picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, price picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. After you've listened to Locked On Fantasy Basketball twice, Go and check out Locked On Sports today. From all the games that matter, all the biggest stories, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights that only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today is available wherever you listen to this show, YouTube, Apple, wherever. You can find it. Easy. Done. Go do it. Heat Warriors. It's a back-to-back for Miami. The Warriors are seven-point favorites in this one. The total is 224, and I just realized that that screen is wrong, so I'm going to go and fix it. All right, that's much better. That's the actual uh, one that we're going to look at. So Heat on the back-to-back. I want to watch um, Bam at a bio. Bam, 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 bam. To say that it's been disappointing from Bam to start the season is an understatement. I have faith that Bam is going to improve, but I feel like we're at this spot where assuming that Bam is going to become this offensive force, I think we just need to abandon that hope. Like he's just never going to be this high-usage hub of the offense sort of player. He's going to be solid enough. He's going to lack rim protection stats. He's going to be a really good defender. And he's going to be a solid third-round player. But you know, that hope of, man, he's going to be, oh, this season's the season. We're going to run things through Bam. I don't think that's the key to a good offense. So I don't think that's going to happen. And I want to watch Kyle Lowry. Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. I fully believe that he is a hold. I fully believe that he's a buy low. We might see something that happens Wednesday that disproves that but I want to see what he's able to do. The minutes are encouraging, but there's a lot of other stuff that's weird with Lowry. 
So let's hope that he can turn it around. I also want to watch the things like the play of Max Struess and the play of old mate Gabe Vincent. Now, we know Oladipo will be out. Yurt Seven's likely out as well. DiVincenzo is out for the Warriors. For the Warriors, Moses Moody I thought was really good last game, especially with Clay Thompson ejected. But he is better than DiVincenzo. He is better than Kaminga. He is better than Wiseman. He is better than Green. But do they play him 10 minutes or 18 minutes? Deeper leagues will want to pay attention to that. And then also watch Clay. It's been really bad for Clay this season. He's nowhere near a 12-team league player based on what he has done. I wouldn't drop Clay, but I also we also need to understand, much like we do with, with Bam, is that Clay's upside isn't top 40 or top 50, or probably even top 70 at this point. Like this is sort of who he is. And I talked about this a lot last season, is because one of his big strengths was three-point volume. And in the time that he'd been out, the 900 or so days, the league had caught up to him in three-point volume. Now, he's still a really good three-point shooter. That's just not falling at the moment. But he doesn't produce in other areas. So he's not a drop. But I'm not ruling it out that he will become one. I'd like to see something start to click for Clay. I'd like to see some of the minutes come up a little bit as well, but we're far away from that. And I'd just like to see some some efficiency because it just it hasn't been there. And that's probably the most troubling part of it. Last game of the day is the Grizzlies and the Kings. The Grizzlies are four and a half point favorites and the total is 235 and a half. Dylan Brooks was Dylan Brooks in game one. He defended pretty well, annoyingly and then was absolutely disgusting on offense. The good thing is that Bain and Morant got the shots. Brooks got some, missed them, but he got some. Can he reel his stupidity in? Can he make sure that he stays the third option? Really should be the fourth option on offense? Or will he start to hijack possessions away from the good players? Because if he does, that really does hurt Bain. Now, Brooks, I think he's more of a 12-team points league guy versus a category league guy. And you've got to be really set up to have him in a category league because of that poor field goal percentage. I also want to see what Johnny Conchar's minutes are. Now, I don't think he's a 12-team league guy anymore. We can probably drop him. But he is a nice deeper league player. And with Zaire Williams remaining out, along with Jaron Jackson, Conchar's going to have a 20-plus minute role, I would guess. And he's playing some pretty decent basketball enough to produce value for those deeper formats. For the Kings, I am absolutely stunned, flabbergasted, shocked that Keegan Murray is going to start. Who could possibly have seen that coming, that he's replaced KZ Okpala. I never would have noticed that. I, I never expected it. I'm actually just still trying to adjust to this amazing revelation that Mike Brown had that Keegan Murray is going to start. So let's see what he does in this starting role that seems so foreign for him. <sighs> Murray was really good in game one. He fell off a little bit in game two. I want to get more of an idea of where he's going to sit in the offensive pecking order. And I want to watch DeMontis Sabonis, because let's be fair, he was dreadful last game because he only played 22 minutes. Now, the counting stats were totally fine. But what I am more worried about is his lack of defense, the fact that he doesn't have a defensive position. Are the Kings and Mike Brown going to go, well, we don't actually need you out there. We can run Metu. We can run Holmes. We can run small. And you playing 34 minutes isn't actually a prerequisite for us winning. That's going to be a disaster for his fantasy value because he won't get 19 and 14 in 22 minutes every night. The more worrying thing is if he plays 27 or 28 minutes semi-regularly. So let's see how they use him in a matchup, which may not be great. If he's switched out to guard Jahu, it might be it might be rough. So we want to see how Sabonis is used and what the playing time looks like. As I said, Jaron Jackson is out. Zaire Williams is out as well. Let's go to some streaming guys now. Category leagues for Thursday. We're looking at Caleb Martin, Trey Mann, Kavon Looney. Tyus Jones is getting 20 plus minutes a night at the moment. Dayron Sharp, Maxi Kleber, Reggie Bullock, and John Conchar all can be streamed in. Now, the value is the top two, really, Caleb and Trey. They're the guys we're really looking at, and then we're losing that value as it goes down. For deeper leagues, there's Sharp and Kleber, Luke Kennard and Terrence Mann. Even Bob Covington, Nick Batum, if they're available, there's some value there. Malik Monk really popped off last game as they went small, limiting Sabonis, putting Monk into more lineups, so watch that one. Nicola Batum, Aaron Wiggins, who had some really nice numbers against the Clippers last time out, and Jermichael Green. And for points leagues, we've got Trey Mann, Storm and Norman Powell, Dorian Finney-Smith, Tyus Jones, Caleb Martin, Kavon Looney, Dayron Sharp, and Royce O'Neal. And that, guys, will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you're here on YouTube, you thumb it up. You leave your comments down below. And, of course, you have to subscribe. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.